And now we have the drape completely done. You see we set up the arthroscope is up on the Mayo uh, over the patient's body and we're making marks. Uh, we make our marks at 30 degrees of flexion just lateral to the patellar tendon is where we'll put our scope in. So our portal is going to be um, inferior pole of the patella, just lateral to the patellar tendon. Personally, I do horizontal portals. You can also do vertical portals. Go ahead and make the skin incision through the capsule into the fat pad and make it big enough so there'll be ease of movement of the cannula and the scope. Always do a timeout. This is the timeout that's being done in the room. So here is our portal incision, lateral. This is a left knee. Again, go deep, make a big enough mini arthrotomy so that we can get the uh, cannula in and move around easily. This is a big cannula with a blunt obturator with the knee in about 30 degrees of flexion then going out to in extension you go ahead and put the uh, cannula in the super patellar pouch. You can then see if there's any fluid or hemarthrosis on the inside of the knee. And now we'll get the 30 degree arthroscope. You can see the light source so the light goes uh, 30 degrees opposite of where the light cord is. Turn the water on. The water has to be on at the base of the camera as well as what he just opened up. And now you can see the undersurface of the patella, the groove. This patient has a loose body from a patellar dislocation that occurred three or four years previously and she could feel a loose body pinging around. This is the patella, looking at the patella and the groove, the trochlear groove. We know on the x-ray she had a loose body in the lateral gutter, so this is looking into the lateral gutter, and there's the loose body. Where there's one loose body, there can be two, so we'll always look to make sure there's not another one, but that's the loose body that came off that medial aspect of her patella. This is going down into where the popliteus tendon lives, lateral gutter. So for loose bodies, oftentimes they are in the suprapatellar pouch or one of the gutters, either the medial or the lateral gutter. This is a plica, plical fold. Medial meniscus is down there at the bottom, as you can see in the arthroscopic view on the left. So you can flush the knee out if, per, if there's fluid or hemarthrosis. Sometimes you have to flush it by taking the cannula, leave the cannula in and remove the scope and um, let gravity help you clear the knee little bubble there on the trochlear groove. Now we're looking um, with the scope lateral, looking at that loose body. We can't really reach it from that aspect. So we've made the medial portal and we are probing in that area, but you can see how we're having difficulty because to get the loose body out we have to have the working portal directly lateral. So we can probe that, but we can't remove the loose body unless we switch the scope to the medial portal. So instead of that being the working portal, now we're going to make that the scope portal. So we can see the loose body very well. So now we'll put the scope in, the medial portal, and then we'll be able to put our grasper in. And you want to make a bigger incision so that it'll be easy to remove that loose body. The rookie mistake is losing the loose body in the soft tissue because you don't have a big enough mini arthrotomy. So you want to keep your eye on the ball, so to speak, or your eye on the loose body. And if you look at that little V, that's where the scope is looking. So now we have the instrument, the grasper, called a Schlesinger grasper. And we will look into that lateral gutter and you can see where the loose body is. There are no ratchets on this. We just open up the jaw as wide as possible. Make sure we have a good bite on that loose body because if we don't have a best bite, sometimes we can park it in the notch and that can be our backboard and we can grab it a little bit better. So now you can have somebody hold your scope and see how he's grasping that Schlesinger very tight and you can see where the light is looking. So we're in the lateral gutter and I'm going to make a little increase in the incision so that we can get that loose body out. So he's pulling, uh, making a little bigger 
incision, mini arthrotomy. He's going to keep on pulling, and out comes the loose body. Didn't lose it in the soft tissue. That's what it looks like. Loose body removed. Again, the scope is now in the medial portal. And when you change your scope to another portal, it is better to use a cannula obturator as opposed to putting the camera directly in because you can ding the tip of the camera and that will mean you have to send that off for it to be buffed and you don't want to ding on the end of your uh, camera. You can see here where we're changing the light around and now we're looking through that medial portal again uh, for the the donor lesion. Where did that loose body come from? And it came from the medial patellar facet. And so now we put the scope back in the lateral portal and we're watching the way the patella tracks. You can see moving the knee flexion, extension, and see how the patella tracks. She had one single dislocation. We're assessing whether she might be a candidate for further surgery of a patellofemoral realignment. But with a single dislocation of loose body, that's um, uh, pretty much we don't need to do any major open realignment procedure. So now I've got the scope. This is a curved shaver. So if we put that shaver in at the same degree of knee flexion, it goes in easily. So you can see how easily that went in the knee. So make a big enough medial portal so you're not struggling to get your instruments back in. And when I do articular cartilage debridement, we have the shaver on oscillate usually. And see I'm coming perpendicular, not making any big bed or a worse defect in the articular cartilage, just getting rid of any loose edges or things that are hanging down, so to speak. So I'm just doing a debridement, not a formal chondroplasty of the patella, but just a debridement. And that's where that loose body came from when she dislocated her patella. So the patella goes out, dislocating laterally, goes lateral to the trochlear groove, into the lateral femoral condyle, and then comes back. And then again, we're looking at the tracking. So I've got the um, scope in my right hand. I'm switching the portal or the light cord around, looking down into that lateral gutter to see if there are any further loose bodies. You can see I've got the uh, knee in my hand, and I put it on my upper thigh. 